Hey everybody, I hope you guys are healthy and safe. So you're watching footage of the main camera of the Huawei Mate 50 Pro. So the main selling point of the Mate 50 Pro is that main camera, 50 megapixel sensor with the fastest aperture in any smartphone right now, f1.4. Okay, sorry, I have to interrupt myself, but the footage you just watched, the Huawei Mate 50 Pro footage is completely unedited. And I did not even do any tweaking of the audio. And considering that, the footage looks and sound really good because the sound was just coming from the internal mic of the phone and I was just walking handheld with one hand. I mean, just check it out. This is the clip. The pro is that I don't have any uh, voice isolation or noise removal toggle on. Usually when I show smartphone footage, I have to check one of these so the sound comes through a little better. But with the Huawei Mate 50 Pro footage, this is just raw footage of the camera. My main camera, 50 megapixel sensor and it sounds really damn good. But on top of that, it has a variable aperture that can go between f1.4 to f4. So the variable aperture is actually a physical shutter around the lens, so you can actually see it moving. That will get bigger or larger depending on whether you want more light to come in. Okay, so you may be wondering what are the benefits of having a physical variable aperture. It just gives you more control over your shot because generally speaking, when you play with aperture, the more wide open the aperture, the more light you let in and also you can change the depth of field blur. Now with a real camera, you can actually see major differences when you switch between aperture. For example, when I'm shooting in f2.2, if I switch to f1.8, you'll see that it's brighter, more light has been allowed in, and the depth of field is also shallower. When I switch to like, like f five right now it's a lot darker and the background is a lot more in focus now because the main camera lens of the main 50 pro is still relatively small compared to a real camera i don't think you're going to see a drastic difference let me switch out to the ultra wide camera to show you this building boom this is a pretty nice building right but you will still see a little bit you can definitely see a change in depth of field and this is real depth of field not artificially produced okay so in the following clip you can see a difference between shooting in f 1.4 and f4 aperture with the mate 50 pro so notice the plants in the background they get a little bit more out of focus a little bit blurred out at f 1.4 versus compared to f4 where they're slightly more in focus but not just that also pay attention to this pillar right here in the foreground this is the foreground now and also same thing at f 1.4 it will be a little bit more blurred out than at f4 so you're playing with the focus pane as you switch between f1.4 and f4 with the Mate 50 Pro. Now the effects are very, very subtle. It's nowhere near like with a real camera. Okay, let's go over the rest of the hardware. So in addition to that 50 megapixel main camera with a variable aperture, you also have a 13 megapixel ultra wide camera with a pretty wide 122 degree field of view. So now you're watching ultra wide footage and this is the, the Walt Disney Hall in Los Angeles. And a 64 megapixel periscope zoom lens that captures 3.5 times optical zoom. But also really, really good 10 times zoom. And the main camera also uses that RYYB, which is a red, yellow, yellow, blue array that allows the camera to take in more light. And the low light capabilities of this camera is pretty crazy, maybe too crazy. For example, yesterday I took this picture of my friend's house at midnight. It was dark at the time, but the Huawei Mate 50 Pro was able to produce an image that almost looked like it was shot at like 6 p.m. Now, on one hand, it's very technically impressive to be able to bring in this much light in a really, really dark scene. But at the same time, it almost doesn't feel like it's a night shot. Likewise, with this photo right here in my pitch black room, you see that the Huawei Mate 50 Pro grabbed an image that's noticeably brighter than both the Pixel 7 Pro and the iPhone 14 Pro Max. And the Mate 50 Pro grabbed the shot a little bit faster too, because both the iPhone and the Pixel 7 Pro used like a four second night mode. Now the Mate 50 Pro used night mode too, but it wasn't nowhere near as long. Now around the front in this uh, unfortunate notch is a 13 megapixel front facing ultra wide selfie camera and also a 3D TOF sensor for real 3D facing loss, meaning it even works at night, unlike most other Android phones, which will only work if you have good lighting because it's a flat 2D facing lock. Now, I have to be honest though, I, a notch in 2022 just looks a little bit outdated compared to all the other phones on the market. But nonetheless, this is still a really good looking panel, 6.7 inch, 120 hertz refresh rate, 2616 by 1212 resolution. 
Okay, so it's an overcast day. I'm under direct sunlight and we can see how the Mate 50 Pro's display fares against the iPhone 14 Pro Max and the Pixel 7 Pro in terms of maximum brightness. Now the iPhone 14 Pro Max has the brighter screen, but you can see the Mate 50 Pro screen is still pretty visible. All these are max brightness right now, but definitely the iPhone 14 Pro Max panel is the brightest of the three with probably the second place being the Mate 50 Pro. This special edition, the orange edition, is the Kunlun Glass edition. So Kunlun Glass is a technology that Huawei developed. It's basically Huawei's version of Gorilla Glass, except Huawei claims that the Kunlun Glass is 10 times stronger than the glass in other smartphones. Now Huawei did not specify is it 10 times stronger than Gorilla Glass Victus or 10 times stronger than a typical glass. I don't know, but if you watch Huawei's press materials, they make very bold claims with this display in terms of its durability. Um, unfortunately, I don't know because I'm not going to test it. I'm not going to drop the phone on purpose or drop stuff on it. We'll just have to wait for some other YouTuber to do that. Now around the back, you also have this full leather finish in orange. It's quite grippy to the touch and you have nice texture. And there's a gold camera ring that's quite attention grabbing. Inside the phone is a Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1, but it is just the 4G version, so this phone does not support 5G due to outside factors. And a 4,700 mAh battery that can be charged at 66 watt speeds with the included brick, or at 50 watt wireless charging speeds if you use Huawei's proprietary wireless charger. You also have 8 gigs of RAM in there with 256 gigs of storage. Both are the latest standards, and IP68 water and dust resistance too. So overall, the hardware and construction is top-notch as you would expect from a Huawei device. The only complaints that you could probably have is with the notch and the lack of 5G. And the lack of 5G, again, it's out of Huawei's control. So anyway, let's go test the cameras. Uh, let's test a couple of shots. We have the Mate 50 Pro main camera. iPhone 14 Pro Max main camera. Pixel 7 Pro main camera. So you're watching main camera video with the Huawei Mate 50 Pro main camera video. Let's switch out to the ultra wide. There's a bit of a stutter when you switch to the ultra wide. So you're watching main camera video with the iPhone 14 Pro Max main camera video. Let's switch out to the ultra wide. Main camera video with the Pixel 7 Pro. Main camera video. Switch out to ultra wide. Okay, so we have a relatively tough scene. We have harsh light coming through the window and a lot of stuff in the foreground. Main camera. iPhone 14 Pro. Pixel 7 Pro. So looking at all images, you can see right away the iPhone blows out the lights from the window the most. Okay, I want to stress that this is not a full review, nor is it a final evaluation of the camera system because there's just so much more to play with, to test. And also, today's conditions weren't that ideal. It was just overcast the whole time. I need to shoot in more diverse lighting conditions to have a final conclusion. But right now, I think you can see the Mate 50 Pro is really good at snapping photos and video. Now, in terms of software, the phone runs EMUI 13 is very similar to the past four or five Huawei devices that I've tested. So I'm not gonna dwell on the software too much. There are some things I like, like for example, I like that in Huawei's native apps, if you swipe up on the app icon, you access an interactive widget, like the photo gallery will have a mini widget, swipe up from the camera, you can choose from the different shooting modes right away. But then there's stuff I don't like. I don't like that you start to swipe all the way from the top to bring down the notification shade. If you swipe from the middle, you bring up the system-wide search, which is never useful for me on Android. But then conversely, I really like EMUI's multitasking menu. You swipe from the side and hold to bring up this menu. Then from here, any app that you launch in this little pullover bar 
will launch in a small floating window and you can put any app on there that you want. Now I don't really feel like I need to go over this again but I know some people are going to ask. No, the Mate 50 Pro does not ship with Google Apps in the phone and you cannot install core Google Apps. A lot of side Google Apps still work like Google Maps and Chrome. You can download those and it will work perfectly fine. You can still access Google services on this phone kind of through like a side method. Like for example, instead of using the YouTube app, you can just go into web browser and type youtube.com and you can still watch any YouTube video. For Gmail, you can run the Gmail app, but then if you use Microsoft Outlook, Microsoft Outlook will actually let you install a Google account and you can still get all your Gmail. The only Google service that I really want and I also cannot find a functional workaround on this phone is Google Docs. You can access Google Docs via the web browser, but it's nowhere near as good as on the actual Google Docs app. But otherwise, almost all the apps that you would need to use your smartphone day to day, like WhatsApp, WeChat, Telegram, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all that work on EMUI 13 perfectly fine. But ultimately, I think the Mate 50 Pro is going to be a niche product for enthusiasts and people who are fans of Huawei products or the Mate series because Huawei is still pricing this thing at a very premium price. This model with the Konung glass and the full leather back retails for 1,300 euros. So that's 1,300 US dollars. But you know what? I kind of admire Huawei for reducing the back down to still charge prices that they feel like the brand is worth. Because Huawei, you know, before all the problems from the US government, Huawei was seen as a very, very premium brand not just in China, but also worldwide. And based on the strength of those phones, Huawei developed a really strong reputation. Like even now I have people commenting on my YouTube all the time saying, I'm still using my P30 Pro because it's so good. So I like that Huawei knows that it makes very premium phones with cutting edge hardware. And it's not gonna lower the price, lower its self-worth just because the US government took the Google licensing away. That has nothing to do with Huawei's phone engineering team. However, even though I say I respect this from like a principal point of view, if I look at it from the consumer point of view, then yeah, it is a very tough sell to ask someone to pay 1300 euros for a phone that doesn't have 5G and doesn't have some Google apps that they may need when there are cheaper devices from Google or Samsung or Apple selling in that exact same store. There are still definitely people that will buy this, fans of Huawei, phone enthusiasts, people who are fans of the Mate series for all the camera innovations they brought. But the average consumer, they're just going to pick a Pixel or a Galaxy S22 Ultra over this because of the restrictions. And that's unfortunate, man. Like I've said for several years, freaking politics getting in the way, man. But anyway, that's about it for this first look at the Huawei Mate 50 Pro. Not a review. I will be back with more content on this phone. I will definitely test the cameras a little bit more in different weather settings at night, all of that. And I'll probably come back with a camera versus. Um, if you want me to do anything particular with this phone against any other device, please let me know in the comments. Uh, thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel. It really helps me a lot. Thanks.